Hello and welcome everybody to the video. Today it's going to be a little bit different, not car related. I'm going to bring you in a little bit into my life and what I've been struggling with for the past, since January 2020. So let me just get this out there. So many people have mental health issues and nobody is open and willing to talk about it because there's a stigma that you're broken or you're sick in some kind of way that you can't function. So a lot of people are struggling with it, but not a lot of people talk to others about it to get help. So I'm just going to open up to my YouTube channel, Bullets Garage, my car community. And if people have issues or anything, they could relate or use this video for some kind of guidance. So let me give you guys a little bit of a background. Um, when I was 19 or 20, I, that's when I first experienced anxiety. It would start always in the morning where I would feel nauseous, be not able to eat. My heart would race. And I just, for like about a month, I couldn't figure out what it was. It was it, was I just scared to go into the x-ray program at the time? Cause I was a student. Was I scared? Like it's, you know, the doctor's first thought, oh, cause I would always belch and burp in the morning, but they thought I had like acid reflux, so they put me on acid reflux medication, which did nothing. Long story short, short turns out it was anxiety causing all these different kinds of symptoms. They put me on an SSRI, which is an antidepressant classified type drug, which is supposed to help treat anxiety and help manage anxiety and panic attacks. And I was on escitalopram 20 milligrams since 2011 2011 basically one minute one pill once a day yada yada it did help i felt for the most part a lot better but it did not completely eliminate my anxiety there was days where i still had panicky feelings and like scared of like social interactions like going to weddings with spike my anxiety, make me feel anxious and scared for whatever weird reason. Um, so yeah, fast forward till January 2020. Um, a couple days right before New Year's Eve, you know, I'm still on that medication and just my anxiety goes through the roof. I mean, I was not able to function I had to call off of work for a couple days because I just I was so anxious I couldn't eat I couldn't sleep I was just like a nervous wreck and out of nowhere so it's like either the medication stopped working or something happened um, I and up to this time I was just dealing with my regular doctor my PCP I've never gone to a psychiatrist but I figured I'm like okay I have you know good health insurance for my job let's go to a actual psychiatrist, see him, and then go from there, which is what I did. Um, so I saw a psychiatrist, he recommended one thing, he's like, it's possible that your old medication basically just is not effective anymore, it stopped working for you, let's try another one, um, which he switched me off to Cetraline, which is the genetic version of Zoloft, and he got me up to 150 milligrams of that within a month's time. But in the meantime, you know, my anxiety was still crazy high. And it takes a while for the SSRI medication to build up in your body to make you start feeling good, which is about a month's time. So he prescribed me, I always say wrong, Klonopin is the formal name, Klonozepam, Klonozepam is the generic version of Klonopin. He prescribed that for me, 0.5 milligram to take, you know, as needed. So I took the Klonopin, I t if I could show you, this is one pill, 0.5 milligram, I would break it in half. I would take half at night, half in the morning for that month's time that I was waiting for this SSRI medication to build in my system and help me feel good. So I was doing that. After a month, the medication started working. I started feeling a lot normal, more like myself. And then the psychiatrist is like, okay, you don't need to be on the 
Kalanopin, which is a benzodiazepine, quick acting, quick release, kind of it releases a lot of GABA receptors in the brain, which help you calm down and feel more relaxed and kind of dull you down, which that's what it was doing. And he's like, okay, if you're feeling okay, there's no need for you to be on this Kalanopin, and what we need to do is get you off. I'm like, sounds good, let's do it. So if I was taking half a pill, one at night, one in the morning, the doctor wanted me to do is to break this in half again, okay, and then do a quarter pill in the morning, half at night for a week, okay. So I'm like, okay, sounds good, let's do that. I started doing that three days in, I started getting terrible withdrawal symptoms from this medication because my brain was already dependent on it to produce those GABA receptors to help me feel calmed and relaxed. So I, you know, I spoke with the psychiatrist again. I told him everything that I was feeling and he's like, well, that's very strange that you're having these kind of symptoms. Not a lot of people get this. Um, he's like, continue trying to get off of it. So another two days passed with this, his recommendation and I was just, I was basically bedridden. I, I couldn't move, I couldn't function, it was just terrible. So at that point I started going online doing research and I came across this website called Benzo Buddies. I'll put a description in the link so you could check it out. It's basically a forum where all people across the world come together and talk about their experiences with benzodiazepine medications like Xanax, Klonopin, Ativan, Ambien, anything that's a benzodiazepine and their horror stories of getting off of this medication and I could have related to all of these people because they were going through some symptoms that I was going through while they were trying to get off this medication. At which point I basically decided okay the way the doctor wants me to do it is not physically possible for me because I can't function and if you do any research online it says to never get off of these medications quickly especially if you've been on them for a long period of time or at a high dose because it could lead to seizures, coma, death and a tons of other symptoms if you get off of it too quickly. So I did research I looked at the Ashton manual, which kind of gives you a guide out of how to taper this medication slowly at a pace where you could try to minimize your withdrawal symptoms and the symptoms of feeling like absolute crap while you're getting off this medication. So that's what I started to do. And it has been so I started to taper off of this medication. Jan 2020 I would say around April so about a month and a half I was on it and I started to taper off of it and in that period of time my brain was already it needed it to be able to function so what happens is when I lowered the dose just that quarter bit it was such a drastic drop of the medication in the brain where it, the brain was like okay I'm not getting enough of this and it started feeling withdrawal symptoms because after you take this for a while, your own brain and neurotransmitters stop producing GABA and serotonin because you're, they're being fed those neurotransmitters through this medication. So the brain stops producing its own. Then once you start lowering the dose, the brain is not producing its own. You keep lowering the dose and it's just havoc being wreaked on your brain. So I started tapering and I'm going to kind of go through and show you guys how I think is the safest way to taper, but it still is a long journey and depending on what kind of dose you're coming off of, if you're coming off, let's say two milligrams a day or whatever the case may be, it's going to be a long journey, but the higher the dose you're at, it's easier to cut down because it's a, such a high dose. Once you get down to like what I am at currently, which is less than a quarter pill a day, any tiny cut that you lower this it has some crazy side effects where it makes you feel pretty crappy. So that's kind of where I'm at guys. Been struggling the last couple days. I had to call in from work because I just been feeling 
absolutely terrible and here in Chicago being winter time it's just rough no sun just it's just crazy so let me kind of walk you guys through how I go and do this taper so if somebody's in my shoes and trying to figure this out hopefully this shows you some kind of guidance so there's going to be a few things that you need to get get yourself a notebook or some kind of notepad journal something where you could write down the day and the doses so you could track exactly and how it's going to work when i first started to taper i would have a morning dose and an evening dose like i told you and i would write that down morning and evening how much i would take and how i would go down so i could just give you a quick look how i would be going down and you could see the cuts are very very tiny going from let's say July 29th from 0 0.0072 holding that for a good five days then dropping it a little bit holding dropping holding it all depends how your symptoms go but per the Ashton manual it says to drop 10% of your dose every two weeks depending on your symptoms so after a while I was doing that, I got down to 0 0.0045 in the morning and 0 0.035 at night. And what I did was I combined the evening and night dose into one, which was I was taking it once a day in the morning. And that's how I've been going down since. And then later on, I started actually feeling, writing how I would feel. So as you can see, the doses would be going down. I feel crappy, crappy. I feel good. I feel okay crappy terrible good 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 terrible so there's you know there's some days or week there's a period of time where i feel okay and most of the time it's like you're feeling eh crappy okay which is just how it's been going but anyway this is where we're at currently i am at the dose of 0 0.0038 and as you can see the last couple weeks have been a pretty crappy feeling so let me show you how i do this what you need to get yourself is a scale to measure out your medication i originally started with this guy right here which is this brand it has been fairly good for the amount of time that i've been using it but it wasn't very consistent it would keep giving me not accurate readouts so about a month and a half ago I decided to purchase this one and this one which I'll have the links to them in the description below so if you want to get them please do and these are this allows me to measure between the two to ensure that I have the correct dose because if you're measuring off of this and it's not correct and it's off and you keep measuring it differently or one day it measures this and the other day it measures differently then you're just screwing up your whole count and you're not tapering slowly how you should be so another thing that i purchased was separate weights because the scales come with their own weights but you want to get a set that you could actually measure against these to make sure that these weights are accurate because if these weights are not accurate when you calibrate it then it's going to give you a, a bad reading so let me just show you how i do this so you always want to turn on your scales when you're about to start measuring your medication and let them run for at least a minute or two so basically they're in the on position um, then you're going to hit tear which means you're going to just reset it and this one you hold unit and it's going to bring calculate and at that point it's telling you to put the 50 pound or 50 gram weight on top which you do that and it's going to say pass and give you the weight so it's reading at 50. let me bring you in and show you so you could see it's 50. so every time you take it off you put it back it should read 50 that's how you know it's reading correctly okay so I have 10 grams I'm gonna put these on and showing 10 grams okay so that's how you know it is properly calibrated so the same thing here I'm gonna press 
mode, which is the calibrate. Oops, sorry. And I'm measuring these in grams because it gives you the most accurate. So you press and hold. It's going to say calculate or calibrate. I'm sorry. Put your 20 milligram for this specific one past 20. Okay. Take it off. Put it on 20. So you know it's measuring correctly. All right. And then once again, I have a 10 right here. And I throw that on and it's showing 10. So the reason why I calculate my pill dosage with a 10 gram, because that way I know, like if you look at here, it's showing 10.004 right now. So that's why I keep the 10 on, because I know it's going to be 10 grams and not be off like this. So let's take this off, put it on, and there you go, it, it evens out. So, all right. You have everything calibrated, broke your pill to whatever, however you're starting. If you're starting with a full pill, then you start with a full one and you just start, you know, weighing or whatnot. I'm currently down to basically less than this. I'm down to 0 0.0038 grams. So if I put this on, it's measuring 0 0.0042. So what I like to do is put it on and off a couple times to make sure it measures that amount. Okay, so it's measuring 4.2. Let me move it here. This one is showing 4.4. Four. Four, four, four. So I mean, it's more or less, I'm just looking to compare between the two, how far off or how close together these scales are telling me so I know what amount I should sh shave off. Okay, four, three. So I know this is the one that I always use the measurement amount of, and this I use to compare just to make sure we're even. This one is, has some kind of issue. It doesn't let me calibrate, but if I put it on there, it is showing 0 0.038, which is not the accurate. So that's, uh, and, it, and see, it, this one kind of jumps up and down. So I don't really use this anymore. But what I do, is I take my medication and I get basically a nail file. And instead of just cutting the pill or breaking it, you know, if you're at a high dose where you just break the pill in half, that's easier to measure. But once you're at a low dose like I am, cutting it with a knife or something is not good. Because the numbers, it's, you're just never going to get the right amount. So what I do then, so it measured, let me take this off, hit tear, which clears it out to zero. This one's being funky too, probably because the phone is there and picking up some kind of frequency. Okay, let me put this on. Okay. Four, three. So I need to shave this down little by little until I get to three eight. So when I do the shaving, I just have a garbage can, hold it in one hand and just gently scrape it down. And then we'll come back. So we shaved it down a little bit, throw it on there. And now it's showing four, two. So it went down a little bit. Okay, see it jumped to 40. What I recommend is don't, don't just, just throw it on and be like, whatever it jumps to, that what it, that's what you're going to stay with. No, take it off. Make sure it comes to 10, which is what the, grant, the weight is on there. Put it on again. 41. See, it's showing 0.4. So let me go over to this one. 42. 42. 40. And I could see that it's having a hard time zeroing out. That's, you know, these scales are not a perfect science for, for the price that they cost, but they're very helpful. Let me 
click tear, clear it out. Forty. Go back here. And sometimes what I do is, if I'm getting inconsistencies like this, I'm gonna just calibrate it again because you'd rather calibrate it again and be safe and know you have correct measurements than than measure and you'd be incorrect. So. So this one's measuring 50. And then you could do this, test it also. So with the 50 gram on there, you throw the pill on and it's showing around 40, which is what it was showing before, which is good. That's how I know this is pretty accurate. And then I put my 10 on. And sometimes it does that where it won't get a perfect reading there we go. Okay, so I'm still reading a little high, so I'm going to shave off just a little bit more. Okay, so I shaved off just a little more to see where we're at. Showing 40. Like it's, you know, trial and error. You got to sometimes take the whole pill and the weight off to get an amount. So as long as you do it a few different ways and it's coming back to the number you want, that's how you know you're more or less correctly measured out your medication. And it's very, it's, it's, so it's between 37 and 39 and landing on 38. Okay, there goes 38 again. Let me just take the pill off, put it on. 38. So I know this pill is what I needed to be at is 0 0.038. Let me put it on here on the 20. And this one usually reads a one higher. Okay, let me take the 20 off and put the 10 gram on. And there you go, 39, which is one higher. So I know this is my dose. And what I do is put it into my container here. This is going to be Wednesday's pill, if I'm correct. Tuesday's, I'm sorry. Yes, Tuesday's, so there we go. Put it in there. And then I write down in my book what the dose is that I measured out. So what I like to do is I, I measure out basically a week's worth in one sitting because that way you know you're, you're measuring it out with basically the machines working for the same amount of time being calibrated, them being calibrated, you know, and everything was done at one sitting. Rather, when you do one pill or if you're having multiple doses, you don't want to be measuring out your morning pill in the morning, your afternoon pill in the afternoon, your other one at night. At least do it if you're taking three times a day or whatever the case is. Measure out your whole day's dose in one sitting. And for me, since I'm down to just this small amount, I measure it out for the whole week and I put it in, in here and that's what it is. So I'll have the links to these scales um, below. I mean, anybody that's struggling with mental health, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to, to shoot me an email or comment below and I will try to help you as best as I can with the information that I've gathered dealing with this for the long amount of time. And if anybody has any helpful tips or advice how to deal with these withdrawal symptoms or to some kind of which therapy works for you please comment below let me know because it's been a very rough year it's been difficult it's been just mentally and physically demanding and torturing on you 
and uh, just I'm pretty just beat up at this point. So sorry about the long video, totally off topic, not related to cars. I look like crap because I've been home the last couple days because I called in from work because I just wasn't able to go in at all. Fingers crossed that I'm better tomorrow and I could go in and actually, you know, do my job and function and help out my team because I don't want to keep calling in and leaving them stranded. So appreciate you guys. Um, see you on the next one.